Hello, Joanne, Karen, Martin. Okay. Janet, let me know when you're ready. And Gunner is no longer on my screen. Yeah, he, he stepped out for just a second. Okay. Oh, there he is. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at his office. Commissioner Muller, welcome. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. How are you? Good, thank you. Commissioner Polly, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. So it looks like we're just missing Commissioner Miller and Commissioner Cho. Janet, I'm ready whenever you are. I am ready now. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the March 15th meeting of the City Planning Commission. My name is Jeff Carson. I am the chair of the City Planning Commission. I want to welcome, again, welcome you all here tonight. I want to make a few introductions of those people that are on, on the call this evening. Uh, first off, we have Commissioner Karen Jones, who is, serves as the vice chair of the City Planning Commission. We have um, Gunnar Hand, who is the director of the Land Use and Urban Planning Department, along with Janet Parker, who's the Executive Assistant to the Department of Land Use and Urban Planning. Uh, Byron Toy is also here with the Unified Government Planning staff as well. Martin Tangier with the Public Works Engineering Department and Patrick Waters with the Unified Government Legal Council. We have the following Planning and Zoning Commissioners present tonight, Commissioner James Ernst, Commissioner Susanna Pauley, Commissioner Nathan Reasons, Commissioner Joanne Huey, Commissioner Mark Muller, Commissioner Brandy Armstrong and Commissioner Jake Miller. And with that, I will turn the meeting over to Secretary Parker who will read the opening statement for tonight's meeting. We would like to welcome those participating to the meeting of the City Planning Commission. Due to the COVID-19 crisis, the members are participating remotely by Zoom webinar. Mr. Jeff Carson is serving as chairman this evening. Please note the following instructions for the meeting. If you are joining by Zoom video, please make sure you have an appropriate background and plan to stay visible during the meeting. Planning Commission members use the raise your hand feature to speak. After Chairman Carson recognizes you, unmute your microphone and please state your name when you begin to speak. If you need to recuse or if you need a personal break, use the raise your hand feature. For those in attendance, use the raise your hand feature when you want to speak on an issue. The chairman will recognize you when it is your time to speak. Unmute your microphone and state your name and address before giving your comments. If you have called in by telephone only, or if you are having trouble logging into the Zoom meeting, please email planninginfo at wicokck.org as Secretary Parker is monitoring that email. Proper meeting decorum is expected of all participating in the meeting, and anyone who fails to act properly may be removed from the meeting. The city reserves the right to discontinue a meeting if any improper behavior occurs, which prevents the uninterrupted conduct of business. The Planning Commission is a voluntary body of citizens which will review each zoning proposal for all change of zones, special use permits, vacations, and preliminary plan reviews on tonight's agenda. The Planning Commission makes recommendations to the Unified Government Board of Commissioners, who will then make the final decisions on Thursday, April 8, 2021. For final plats and final plan reviews heard tonight, the Planning Commission's decision is final and there will not be another hearing. The format for this evening's meeting is as follows. The applicant will make the opening statement explaining the proposal. Please note that the applicant will be given 15 minutes to present their case. 
The 15 minutes includes the applicant, consultant, and other members of the applicant's team. Members of the Planning Commission will then address any questions they may have to the applicant. Any persons wishing to speak in favor will be called upon and allowed to do so at that time. Then those persons in opposition will be called upon and allowed to make their statements and ask questions. Please note that each member of the public who wishes to speak will be given five minutes to express their opinions. Time may not be shared between speakers. A speaker may request to extend their time and the Planning Commission may, by two thirds majority vote, extend any speaker's time in five minute increments. The applicant will then answer questions and make a closing statement. The public hearing portion of the meeting will then be closed and the public will only be allowed to address the commission if a question is directed to them. The Planning Commission will discuss the application and make their recommendation. If persons in opposition want to formally protest a change of zone or special use permit, a means is available by a legal protest petition, which can be obtained along with the necessary instructions by emailing the Urban Planning and Land Use Department at planninginfo at wicokck.org tomorrow morning. Any application receiving a unanimous vote of recommendation by the Planning Commission will appear on the consent agenda of the Unified Government Board of Commissioners. Unless there is a request to remove an item from the consent agenda by the applicant, a member of the Unified Government Commission, or other interested parties, the Planning Commission's recommendation will be adopted. The, plan the consent agenda is heard at the beginning of the meeting at 7 p.m. The Planning Commission will also have a consent agenda as part of their meeting this evening. The consent agenda is the first part of the agenda. Items on the consent agenda are final plans, final plans or special use permit renewals that have received a staff recommendation to approve. Unless there is a request to remove an item from the consent agenda by the applicant, a member of the staff, a member of the planning commission or other interested parties, the staff recommendation on all of the items on the consent agenda will be adopted by the Planning Commission at one time. I will read a list of agenda items on the consent agenda, and when I have completed the list, the chairman will ask if there are any requests to remove items. This is your time to use the raise your hand feature, be recognized, and request that an item be removed from the consent agenda if you do not agree with the staff recommendation. The Planning Commission is required to disclose contacts about any item on the Planning Commission agenda. Before each item, I will ask if any contacts have been made and members of the Commission will be asked to disclose those contacts. Please know that your opinions will be forwarded to the governing body for their consideration in making a final decision. In addition, those who receive notices for this evening's hearing will again receive them for the hearing on Thursday, April 8, 2021. I will now read the items on the consent agenda. Special Use Permit Application, SP 2021-009, James Donovan with the Showroom Floor, LLC. Renewal of a Special Use Permit for an Airbnb at 1127 Southwest Boulevard. Special Use Permit Application SP 2021-010, Kelly Fountain. Renewal of a Special Use Permit for a kennel at 3440 North 131st Street. The items I have just read are on the consent agenda. At this time, does any member of the commission wish to disclose any contact on any of these items? No. no. Mr. Chairman, please include the following items as part of the record for all of the items on the consent agenda. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning maps for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated March 8, 2021, the application of the documents, plans, 
pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the publications in the ECHO, and the notices to property owners. The commission will vote to approve in one vote these items unless someone requests that an item be removed from the consent agenda. Thank you, Janet. Are there any commission members? Is there any item on the agenda that you would like to see removed for special consideration? Please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, we'll go to the audience. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to have something removed from the uh, agenda this evening, excuse me, from the consent agenda for special consideration? At this time, please raise, use the raise your hand feature. Okay, I'm not seeing any. Staff, is there anything that you would like to have removed? Yes, Mr. Chair, staff would like to request that SP 2021-010 be removed from the consent agenda, please. Thank you. I will now entertain a motion to approve the remaining consent agenda items. I move that we approve the consent agenda minus the case that staff wants to take off, which is SP 2021-010. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by commission, excuse me, motion made by Commissioner Jones, seconded by Commissioner Armstrong. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong. Commissioner Armstrong. Aye. There you go. Thank you. Ernst. Aye. Ewing. Aye. Jones. Aye. Moeller? Aye. Pauling? Aye. Reasons? Aye. Is uh, Mr. Chairman, is Mr. Miller on here with us yet? Oh. Yes, okay. yes, I'm an aye. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, that motion to approve the one remaining item on the consent agenda passes eight in favor and none opposed. Thank you. We will now go to the one item that was removed from the consent agenda by staff, special use permit application SP 2021-010, Kelly D. Fountain, renewal of a special use permit for a kennel at 3440 North 131st Street. Okay, thank you. Uh... Kelly Fountain, I have you unmuted and ready to speak. Could you go ahead and give us your name and address, please, and tell us about your project here? Okay, my name is Kelly Fountain, and my address is 3440 North 131st Street in Kansas City, Kansas. And I am asking that my special use permit be renewed for 10 years. I currently am running a kennel at this address and I have runs for 10 dogs. Are there any questions that anyone has for me? Any questions for the applicants? I just have a couple. Are, do, you only, are, do you only take dogs, uh, Ms. Fountain, or do you uh, other animals? I only take dogs. Okay. And are these are the animals dropped off at, at your property or do you do you pick them up? How how is that handled? The owners of the pets drop them off. Okay. And then pick them up, of course, when the boarding time is finished. Okay. And what are your normal operating hours? I open at 8 a.m. and I'm open till 1 p.m. Then between 1 and 3, I close. And then I reopen at three and I close for the evening at 6 p.m. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, seeing none, well, the public portion of the meeting, is there anyone in the audience tonight that would like to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request? Please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to staff and get their comments. Director Hand. Hey, Mr. Chair, this is Gunnar Hendrick of Planning and Urban Design. We wanted to pull this off of the consent agenda as over the last year or so, we've been applying standard conditions for these types of um, home occupation SUPs that didn't make it into the summary of conditions. So we would ask that um, the Planning Commission, uh, we do recommend approval. We would ask the Planning Commission in their motion to approve would add two conditions. One, uh, as was just noted, 
uh, that marks the hours of operation from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and another one that would note that there are um, a maximum of three off-street parking spaces provided for this um, business on this property. Otherwise, there were uh, no notices of violations. There was um, one letter in support. We received no letters in opposition. We do have some other standard conditions like no signage for similar types of SUPs that were in support of. We just wanted to get those other two on the on the books as this is going to be a 10 year, is proposed to be a 10 year renewal. Okay, thank you. Questions for the director. Commissioner Jones. Director Hand, uh, could you repeat the last one with regard to off street parking? I didn't hear part of that for the spaces. Um, there will be three off, a maximum of three off street parking spaces provided for this, for this uh, project, for this use. Got it. I got her, I have one question. Is there any type of requirements, uh, whether it be through, uh, I don't know if it's health department or through um, animal control, that kennels must, that any animals taken to kennels must have must be current on uh, their shots, things like that? Or is that even a, even a thing? Oh, I'm sure it's a thing. I'm not 100% sure about our animal, uh, what our animal ordinances are, though I can double check. Our zoning enforcement officer was in animal control previously, so that should be a quick question. Any other questions for the director? Uh, I'm gonna go back to the applicant, uh, Ms. Fountain. Um, as far as the vaccinations required, the Department of Agriculture has always required rabies, distemper, parvovirus, and bordetella. And proof of those vaccinations are always required prior to a dog staying. And in addition, I ask that they have the leptospirosis and the canine influenza vaccination. Great. Thank you very much for that information. Uh, Commissioner Jones. I just have a quick question for the petitioner. Is most of your business repeat? Uh, and whether it's repeat or not, uh, these vac vaccination requirements and any other requirements do you, uh, every time somebody comes to you, uh, restate what the requirements are? Oh, absolutely. We require that everything be current at any time the pet stays. And um, usually what will happen is either the people will bring the vaccinations in or their veterinarian will email the vaccinations to us or we will call the veterinarian to make sure that the vaccinations are current. If the vaccinations are not current, we do not accept the pet. Very good, thank you. Any further questions for the director? Seeing none, I'll stand for a motion. Oh, excuse me, I've got one more. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Well, it wasn't a question, I was just gonna make the motion. Go ahead. Um, move to approve subject to the stipulations in the staff report, including keeping the hours of operation from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and a max of three off-street parking. Space. All right. Motion to approve made by Commissioner Miller. Any, is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Armstrong. Any discussion on motion for approval? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Ewing? Aye. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moeller? Aye. Holly? Aye. Reasons. Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of this special use permit subject to the revised conditions passes. Eight in favor and none opposed. Thank you. Janet, will this be heard before the BOCC? Uh, both of these special use permits will be, yes. Okay, so this will be heard once again on April 8th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that completes the consent agenda, and we will now move on to the non-consent agenda. Our first item is change of zone application, COZ 2021-001, James B. Evans. Change of zone from AG Agriculture District to R1 Single Family District for a single family home at 1825 North 94th Street. Please include the following items as part of the case for this record. I'm part of the record for this case. 
The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning maps for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated March 15, 2021, the application and other documents, plans, pictures, and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandotte Echo, and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Thank you. Mr. Evans, are you in the audience or is there someone in the audience representing Mr. Evans? If you would, please raise your hand. Mr. Evans or his representative, if you're in the audience tonight, would you please raise your hand and I'll, I will recognize you. Mr. Chairman, I did get an email from him and he was having trouble getting on the call. I think he had the wrong link. I okay. sent it to him, but I don't see him on here yet. Okay, can we go ahead and move this to the bottom of the agenda? Janet, you're back on mute. Ms. Parker, you're on mute still. I'm sorry. He has sorry. his next application, so we'll also move that one and move on to change of zone application COZ 2021-003. Carol Blackwell, change of zone from R1 single family district to AG agriculture district for agricultural purposes at 3505 North 83rd Street. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated March 15, 2021, the application and other documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandotte Echo and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Ms. Blackwell, I've got you queued up to speak. If you could start off, please give us your name, your address, and then tell us about your project. I'm Carol Blackwell. Uh, I presently, do you want my address for where I presently live or where? Yep. Yes, please. Okay, 8007 West 153rd Terrace, Overland Park, Kansas. Thank you. Go ahead and tell us about your project. Okay. Um, I'm really wanting the, the um, three car garage for uh, equipment, which is my tractor and a uh, bush hog and it has then a snow blade on the front of it. There's over a thousand feet, linear feet of driveway that I'm gonna to have to clear from snow and so forth. There's, um, there's various pieces of equipment that will, it's 19 acres up there. That's just north of Leavenworth Road, about a half a mile. It's on the east side of the road. It's very, very private, very secluded up there. I've got the water line in, I have the electrical uh, line paid for, and they've cleared the trees to put the poles in and to run that electrical. They're scheduled to dig the foundation for the house on the 22nd, which is next week. Um, and I'm working on all of those contracts. Basically, the barn will be strictly for my hobbies. I'm um, an older lady. I've worked very hard. I owned a home health company and had sold it. Um, it um, provided me with a nice retirement and I'd like to pursue my hobbies. I've worked very hard, six days a week, eight and 10 hour days for quite a few years now. I'm a nurse and I would like this barn to pursue my hobbies. I like to make wooden uh, furniture for myself. I don't sell any of it, haven't sold any at all. We'd like to put beehives. Uh, we understand that we, from Mr. Owen, Paula and Ivan Owen, really nice people to talk to own OBs and they have uh, quite a large beehive business going. And uh, my son is very um, knowledgeable, would like to increase the bee population. He feels very strongly about it. And I have said, yes, indeed, let's do that. So we'd like to start out with about three beehives with the recommendation of Mr. Owen. 
And we're uh, going to go interview um, this next week with another man to get the hives ordered. Um, we're hoping then to get at least one, and you may even be able to put two per acre. We are rototilling um, any piece that we can actually till, which is not a whole lot, but we're putting in white clover and we're putting in a lot of wildflowers that attract uh, birds, butterflies, and bees. Um, so we're, we're quite excited about it. We think it's going to help rebuild the bee population that's been devastated. It was a tough winter for them. I wouldn't aware of that. And the things we do for our kids, right? <laughs> okay, any questions for the applicant from the commission? Seeing none, we'll go to the public. We'll open the public portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience tonight that would like to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request? Please raise your hand. Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to Director Hand for his comments. Excuse me, I've got a, I've got a hand up. Uh, Elaine Cross, I've got you queued up to speak. Go ahead and give us your name and address, please. My name is Elaine Cross. My address is 3530 North 80th Street. And I oppose this. Okay, do you have any anything you wanna make us aware of for your opposition? Just discrepancies and what has been said is going up there and just the sheer size of the structure. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the audience that wants to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request? I see a hand up on, nope. Sorry. Is there is there a question from the commission? Uh, Commissioner Jones. I wanted to ask Ms. Cross about her opposition is still specific, more specific in terms of the petitioner said that uh, it's somewhat out of sight and, and um, discreet. Can you see it from your property or what, can you be more specific about your concern, please? Ms. Cross? Yeah, my property is just to the uh, east of there. It borders. There's a tree line that's between it. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but given the plans that have been submitted, I do believe I'll be able to see it from my property. Um, right now, we just have, obviously, um, some acreage up there. It's been very pretty tree line, and my concern is that I'll be able to see that. And from the property. Mr. Jones? Ma'am, and so did you say you're on 80th Street? Was that your street address? That's correct. It's 3530 North 80, and the, my property is about seven acres right there, and then it's going to set up um, to the east border of this property. And what is it that you're concerned specifically about seeing that that you don't want to see? Uh, just the structure itself. I think it should be a two-story um, barn that has like offices and stuff upstairs that were in the plan. And I think I'll be able to see that through uh, my tree line or from above the tree line. I have a two-story residence there right now. But right now, all I can see in all directions are the tree. So, oh, ma'am, it's the size of the building that you're concerned with as opposed to the building itself? The size of the building is the concern, correct, along with the, the discrepancies in the planning. Um, I think the original plans that were submitted have um, some offices upstairs, so and there's no real information for the offices, the conference rooms, and what, um, what the building is actually going to be for. And one last question for now, ma'am. Have you had communication with the petitioner, Ms. Blackwell? We uh, have. We went um, to the neighborhood meetings and stuff like that. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in the audience wants to speak in favor of or opposition to this request? 
Seeing none, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to Director Ham for his comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Gunnar Ham, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, you all recall that in January, this property was heard by the Board of Zoning Appeals for a variance. Um, it's currently zoned R1. The variance was for a accessory structure larger than allowed by code. That variance was denied. Ms. Blackwell has has submitted another application for this property for a change of zone that would, uh, from R1 to AG, if granted, would remove the requirement for a certain sized accessory structure. So the plan is still to build a relatively large barn and single family home. I'd just like to point out that although they're associated with this bone with this um, entitlement, the actual construction and 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 of the house and the accessory structure are still held to height requirements and other requirements. So there really isn't, the, the barn isn't in front of us today. The change of zone is. Now, again, they're somewhat related because essentially we're going through a change of zone to remove the restriction of an R1, which limits the size of an accessory structure. But that accessory structure still cannot exceed the height limit in an agricultural zone, which is the same height limit as an R1 zone. So I just wanted to clarify that point uh, really quick. There was definitely some confusion in that previous BOZA case as that, if you recall, the, the site, the floor plans for that accessory structure did bring into question whether that would be for commercial uses or not. Staff worked with the applicant and developed a condition of approval very similar to other conditions that does not allow commercial activity on this property. It is a uh, 19 plus acre site. If you, all if you all recall, any property, whether it's zoned R1 or agricultural, regardless, um, over three acres does not need to match the materiality of the primary structures. So this could be a house with a regular looking pole barn to it, if you will, um, if approved moving forward. So just a couple clarifications there. Um, there were no uh, NOVs on the property, although there has been some citations recently. Uh, the construction site has been letting, especially with the recent rain, has been letting a lot of uh, dirt and debris out on the public right away. Um, as such, staff would, uh, we do recommend approval, but we would ask to amend that um, with uh, your motion to include some additional conditions of approval one, we'd like to add two standard conditions. These were just not included in this staff report. They were included in the BOSA and they should have carried over. So I apologize for this typo, but we would ask that the standard condition for land disturbance permits, for driveway permits, and we already have the one in there for building permits, but the, the one for, again, land disturbance and driveway permits be added. Those are just kind of more of an awareness thing that as Ms. Blackwell, were to, if she were to move forward, or even if not approved tonight and we're to move forward, continue to move forward with our house, just to be aware of, of those permit processes that are out there. We've been adding those um, as standards over the last nine months to a year. Um, and then additionally, we would ask that a, a third condition of approval be added to provide an erosion control plan for staff um, to mitigate uh, the, um, the flow that's happening out of her driveway onto the public right of way. Erosion control plan, um, once submitted, can be reviewed by engineering. They can go out there and they control and they can make sure that this doesn't happen moving forward. But basically, we just want to make sure that she's keeping the road clean and, and the dirt and debris from, from going into the public right away. So with those three conditions, which again, there was a lot there, so I'm happy to answer questions. But with those three conditions, we do recommend approval. All right, thank you. Uh, questions for the director, uh, Commissioner Reasons. Yes, uh, Gunner. Um, I do have a, a little bit of a concern uh, where she's asking for get her property zone agriculture. And it sounds like she's throwing the bees in there just to, to get it to be able to zone agriculture, because I, I would think if we're going to zone someone's property for agriculture, it needs to be used for that, not just for uh, a woodworking shop. And, and that's a concern to me because it, is this going to set a precedent to anybody that says, well, I want a couple kitty cats. So I want my property zone agriculture to help with other things so I can build whatever I want to. Is this going to start setting that kind of precedent in the future? 
Well, I would say two things. I think globally, outside of this case, there were a lot of properties that were formerly agricultural when incorporated that just became our ones. I mean, the entire Sorter Drive neighborhood was agricultural, and we've slowly been turning that over. Very similar to this neighborhood, essentially everything north of Leavenworth, um, and uh, I would say west of, you know, loosely west of 435, were, were always zoned agricultural. Many of them were not farms necessarily. Um, they were just land that large tracts of land that people live on. Again, residential uses are allowed on agricultural zones. You are allowed to use an agriculturally zoned piece of property for just a residence. Um, so we think that based on the size of this property and the uses, again, that uh, we would recommend approval. The, the difference between R1 and Ag is, is essentially you can build much bigger accessory structures and you can build multiple accessory structures. Right. And that is why Ms. Blackwell was pursuing a change in zone. Okay, thank you. And just for clarification, you don't have to have livestock or animals or anything like that for a property to be zoned or to be able to fall under that category or to get that category, categorization, is that correct? That's correct. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ernst? Gunner, for this and other cases that we run across, could you review for the the steps we can take if it ends up going for a business use? And that's always the concern when it's big and maybe questionable. Uh, would you run through the steps we can take to stop that? And maybe it would allay some of the fears of them doing sure. something different sure so um again uh hypothetically if approved tonight and it was rezoned agricultural and if it was found out through zoning enforcement action or if neighbors tipped us off and we were able to go out there and and see it in in, uh, in person for commercial uses um again everything that is allowed in the barn uh, and then we saw other stuff, right? So if we saw large dump trucks or if we saw some other type of commercial activity, um, what would typically happen is we would open a, a we, would, we would take some photos, document it, um, open a notice of violation, and then begin pursuing uh, uh, remedi uh, sort of remediation of that issue. So, uh, in this case, if we did the, if we were to move forward with the rezoning, um, which does not allow commercial uses on that in the property, and we did some commercial uses, we'd open an NOV, and then we would start to track it for administrative citations. Administrative citations um, essentially are fines um, that encourage remediation of the violation. Uh, there is no, let me think about this before I say it, there would be in this situation, no entitlement that would rectify that situation other than another SUP, or excuse me, other than an SUP that is essentially a temporary use of land. Um, so we'd probably ask Ms. Blackwell to come in and file an SUP for commercial use of the property, depending on how, how that would go forward. If that didn't go forward, we'd, we'd move forward with the administrative citations. Again, which start really low. I think they begin at hundred bucks, but after seven uh, citations, they max out at 1500. And we can go out there as many times as we see fit um, to incur those um, fines associated with it. Uh, we've had cases similar to that um, uh, in the county, and zoning enforcement cases are always in struggle, is the truth. Okay, uh, I've got Commissioner, excuse me. Commissioner Jones. Gunner, uh, with what we I believe we're charged with doing and trying to balance uh, Ms. Blackwell as the petitioner, her request uh, and still being sensitive to Ms. Cross's concern. My, my question is this, do we have uh, specific plans about other than the size of the structure that she's wanting to build in addition to her home for her woodworking and everything, uh, and because it just seems that even at, I think, 3,600 square feet, 
19 acres is going to dwarf that. And I heard you say, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that the materials that the structure is built out of don't necessarily have to match the home. But in terms of it being, you know, not being, I, I don't think that she built a new eyesore or anything, but it's just not going to match. And so do we have information about how close to the home, um, a little bit more about that structure? There's a building permit right now for the single family home. Um, I do not believe Ms. Blackwell has pulled a permit for the accessory structure yet. So no, I, we don't have a site plan as part of this project. Again, if we change the, if we, <clears throat> she doesn't need a change the zone to build the house. So I think that's why the, poem, the permit for the house has been pulled right now. But um, again, that's as long as they meet she meets code on the house, there is no entitlement required. So um, it would be the same for this accessory structure. Are you concerned about the materiality or the size? Well, I thought I thought that the uh, lady that spoke, Ms. Cross, that spoke in opposition, it sounds like she's concerned about the size, but I thought maybe she's concerned about, you know, uh, how it'll look from, you know, aesthetically, that it's gonna be some sort of, you know, large um, eyesore that she can see. Gunner, I want to reel us in right now. We are here to talk about a change of zone. We're not here to talk about the structures. Of, am I correct or am I off base about that? Um, this is a change of zone action. Mr. I'd Connor. say that there is, a, it, there is a change of zone action, but there is a nexus here because we know she's doing it to build that barn. Um, the, the, the way I just I, want to get I, too far in the weeds. I, I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm pulling us back into it. So, Commissioner Jones, the way I would answer that is, mm. Um, whether it's the barn or it's the house, if she builds it to code, that's no different than anybody building anything else to code next to it. It's like saying you can't build a single family home next to my single family home because I'm gonna see your single family home. Right. That's so right. if there was an issue that we that the commission felt was a necessity here, my recommendation would be to require some sort of um, screening or buffering. We do require screening and buffering between multifamily and single family. We do not by code require it between single family and single family, which is essentially what this is. Um, but if you wanted to, and that was a specific issue, we could ask her to, we could ask as a commission approval that, that, that either the, I mean, I wouldn't do it for the house, but I would say that the barn would need to be properly screened from, from adjacent properties. And in that sense, that would require Ms. Blackwell when she pulled that permit to show a landscape plan of some sign that showed evergreens. If that's how you so that's how you stipulated or other or other screening techniques, berms, fences, what have you. Well, bottom line, I don't want us to get into things that we don't need to get into in terms of precedent setting. Uh, but I could see the nexus as you suggested without you know wanting to get into the weeds on it. So bottom line is she can it's compliant right now. Thank you. Mr. Carson, this is Carol Blackwell. May I speak? Go ahead. The barn is totally surrounded by trees. There will be one corner since they cut down the trees to put in the electric poles. Uh, the they, there will be one corner of it that can be seen and it's the same color as the house. And I did reduce it from 3,600 to just under, just right at 3,000. There is only one room in the barn that's going to be an office. And I have owned real estate apartment buildings and, and office buildings and residential houses for over 50 years. I have an awful lot of files that I don't wanna lose that I need to keep track of. My uh, CPA says, hold on to them for eight years at least. There is no conference room in the barn. There are no other offices in the barn. There is nothing commercial going on in the barn. I have, I have repeated that in four different letters that there are no commercial activities going on in the barn. They're just hobbies and we wanna build the uh, beehives in there. So uh, that'll be part of the woodworking. So the, uh, the colors on the building will match the colors on the house. She, I drove by this address uh, last Friday and I checked out some of the other properties that are surrounded by agricultural zoning and R1 zoning, all in the same street, all in the same neighborhoods. 
And this house is not going to be able to see this, this barn. It is not two stories high. That is not true. It is, it is um, I think it's either 12 or 14 is all that it is, uh, feet high. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, any other questions for the director? I do see some hands up in the uh, in the public, and I'm sorry, but we've already closed the public portion of the meeting, and I, I can't go back to that. So the opportunity to speak to this case was at the time that the public portion of the meeting was open, and that that goes for the cases that follow. So when we do ask for public comment, that is your time to speak. Once we close that, we're now between the director uh, of uh, urban planning and the commission. So any further questions from the commission of the director? Seeing none, excuse me, Commissioner Moeller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Gunner, uh, we've had issues with a, with a, a very large building in this same neighborhood um, and have the potential it appears to encounter the same thing. Can you tell us where we are on that original um, large building? The, are you talking about 3201 Pomeroy? It's in the Pomeroy neighborhood or right around there. We're still in the middle of an enforcement case on that property. And that could go on for a long time. It's going to keep going until we resolve the issue. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Other questions of the director? Seeing none, I will stand for a motion. Motion to approve subject to staff stipulations with the additional stipulations of a land disturbance permit, a driveway permit, and an erosion control plan. Second. Okay, motion, motion to approve by Commissioner Pauly, seconded by Commissioner Miller. I see Commissioner Ernst hand up. I was just up for the second. All right, thank you. Any discussion on motion for motion for approval? Commissioner Reasons. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm still kind of stuck on this 3,000 square foot shop for a hobby. Um, that's big for woodworking. I mean, I've done woodworking for years and I definitely don't need 3,000 square feet of space to woodwork. Um, it is a concern to build something that big in this area. Uh, and then to say you're going to keep bees in there and then now she's also just mentioned she owns properties. Um, I, I'm concerned that it's going to turn into a storage facility uh, for storing all her uh, property equipment or property whatever for her for her uh, rental properties that she said she owns. So I, I believe she said she owned property. I'm not sure that she still okay okay owns property, but I may be mistaken. But yeah, well, and continue. That's, yeah, and that's that's a concern I have because I mean if she if she's doing that type of a business, she is going to be storing business stuff in there and it's not just going to be strictly a hobby thing because i mean three thousand square foot is very large uh for a storage uh hobby issues so i i have a concern with that that that's the only issue that i have so if i may right. commissioner go ahead can you answer that question yes go ahead so she can have a home office without an sup but the second they start and anything associated with the home office emails, files, things of that nature, right? The second she starts to store something for that business, like furniture or like, I don't know, let's, I'm going along with your line of thinking here, if she was staging houses, all right, she's got some mm -hmm. furniture and stuff. She'd have to come back and get an SUP. Okay. All right. Mr. Moeller. I just have a brief statement. I think this just sounds like an end around from what we denied earlier. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ernst. I, I couldn't agree more, but at the same meeting we denied her, we approved roughly the same thing, a 200 square foot building. And I just wish we'd get consistent in what our rules are that we're enforcing for everyone versus 
this one hits me wrong. Okay. Thank you. So, so if this is no, then it's too big, but we need to be consistent. Thank you. Commissioner Miller. I was basically just going to make the same point as Commissioner Ernst in that. I mean, my opinion on this is the change of zone. We can't look at the building as much. I get that there's a nexus, but at the end of the day, we've got enforcement to make sure that there's no business in the building or the size of the building or anything else. I mean, at, this is a change of zone and I don't see a reason to not change the zone. Now, there can be arguments for the building down the road and all that, but that comes up to enforcement and codes down the road. And they may be back in front of us for, for an NOV or something, but I don't think we can control that. Thank you, Commissioner Reason. Yeah, uh, Jake, just to, or just to kind of, the reason why I'm concerned is by switching it to, if I'm misspeaking, tell me, but when we switch it to an ag uh, property, there's no limit on certain, uh, how many structures or even kind of the size of the structure. And I think that's the concern that I have is, I mean, she can build a normal, up to I think was a thousand or fifteen hundred square foot shop on a residential property, but she's wanting to go over that on a residence, and and I think that's and, and once you go to ag, there's like she can almost pretty much just do it, and I think that's my biggest concern. But on the flip side, there could be three one thousand square foot structures built on the same property. There is there would be no limit um, that that can be done. Correct. So, I mean, what does somebody want to look at? One 3,000 square foot building or three 1,000 square foot buildings just to hit the minimum. So, you know, who's to say what? But uh, Commissioner Miller's comments are right. We're going to talk about change of zone. Further questions on the uh, motion to approve change of zone? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Ewing? Aye. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moeller? Aye. Pauly? Aye. Reasons? Nay. Chairman, I motion to recommend approval of this change of zone application subject to the revised conditions by staff passes seven in favor and one opposed. Thank you. This will be heard once again on April 8th before the Board of County Commissioners at 7 p.m. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I was able to work with Mr. Evans. I did get him on the call. So with your permission, we will go back and call his change of zone application. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Change of zone application COZ 2021-001, James B. Evans. Change of zone from AG Agriculture District to R1 Single Family District for a single family home at 1825 North 94th Street. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated March 15, 2021. The application and other documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Echo, and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. No. Hey, Mr. Evans, if you're in the audience, please raise your hand for me. I've got a James, a Jamie, and a Jamie C. So I want to make sure I'm, I've got the right person. So please raise your hand. Okay, I'm not seeing it. I'm going to go ahead and allow James to speak. Folks, if you don't have your name listed on your uh, Zoom profile, you're going to have to raise your hand so I can identify you. I've got phone numbers. I've got first names. I don't have last names. I need to know who you are. So I need to use the, use the raise your hand feature to identify who you are when we call your case. So, okay. Mr. James, are you, or is that, are you Mr. Evans? I'm James Evans. All right, great. I got the right one. Okay. Cool. Give us your name, give us your name and address and tell us about your, uh, your, uh, your project here. 
Yeah, I'm James Evans. My P.O. Box is 12925 Cass City, Kansas, 66112. And my residence is 1841 North 94th. And um, that's my property. I have two properties, 1825 and 1841. There you, you found it. Okay. Uh, what I want to do, I want to rezone it to residential. I've never, I've, I've had the property, the property at 1841 since 2014 and the 1825 since 2015. One of them's just under two acres, the other one's about seven and a half. I've used it for residential, never have I used it for, yeah, that's it. Never has I used it for agriculture, no cows, horses, sheep, goats, other objects. Um, basically, okay, snow. Um, what I want, I want to do is uh, develop the property in a couple of years from now. And as you can see, I have a big piece of property. I spent the last few years cutting down trees. I'm an anti-environmentalist, I guess you'd say. I've torn apart a lot of trees and it's a beautiful site. You can actually, from the one property, you can see the, the woodlands from the front door of the house that we built there. And I have some of the best views in all of Kansas City, Kansas, that overlooks the, the legends. I go there every night and enjoy my dinner with a beautiful view of the valley. So um, I have no opposing neighbors. Uh, they just like, they like it that I clean off my property. Um, I'm doing opposite of the case you just had a minute ago. I'm going to go from agricultural to residential. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions for the applicant on these two cases? Janitor, is it okay to hear these two together? Sure. No, I'm, I'm talking to the secretary. Oh. I believe so, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we'll just need two motions on each one. Right. Or we'll need a motion on each one. Can I go ahead and call the other one? Yes, just please. Just so that it's in the record. Thank it's you. Change of zone application COZ. 2021-002, James B. Evans, change of zone from AG Agriculture District to R1 single family district for a single family home at 1841 North 94th Street. All right, thank you. Questions for the applicant on either of these two cases? Seeing none, we'll go to the public. Is there anyone in the public tonight that wants to speak in favor of or in opposition to either one of these two cases? For 1825 North 91st, 94th or 1841 North 94th? Please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to staff for comment. Director Hand. Hey, Mr. Chair, this is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Um, although this is the same Entitlement requests for both. There are small nuances that we'd just like to point out. Um, for the first one, 001, uh, again, there is no primary structure, but there are accessory structures. So when, if and when this is approved to R1, those accessory structures um, are no longer oh. allowed. As such, we've written a condition of approval that those accessory structures be removed if approved. Um, if you recall last week, we heard the Boza case for this for 002 at 1841 North um, 94th Street. And you can see it very clearly in this um, uh, lot split uh, uh, request. So again, Mr. Um, Evans is gonna split the property pretty much right down that line and effectively have three properties all zoned R1. He believes in, in the future, he hopes to, to submit a future subdivision moving forward. So for this case, we added a condition of approval. And you can see it better in this picture. If the lot, if the property is split in two, the property where Mr. Evans uh, lives, which was associated with BOZA 2021-00 through that was a, approved last week for two accessory structures in an R1 zone where you're only allowed one accessory structure. Again, we have the carport and the shed here. This property will access the North 94th. The condition of approval for this change of zone is this, what he's calling track B. This future track B will access Garfield Avenue. 
and with those, as Mr. Evans said, there's been no NOVs. There's a couple of old NOVs that have been cleared up, but essentially no NOVs. We've received no letters in opposition and support for either of the cases. We recommend approval for both. Okay. Thank you. Questions for the director? Commissioner Ernst, nope. do you have anything? Okay. Questions for the director? Commissioner Jones. Need to unmute yourself, Commissioner Jones. Sorry, thought I did. Uh, just want to confirm, I see it in the report, but Governor, uh, the petitioner is aware about the demolition that has to occur as a consequence, correct? I believe so. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Director Hand? Seeing none, I will stand for a motion and this will be on Change of zone for 1825 North 94th, 20, case 2021-001. Commissioner Miller. Move to approve, move to recommend approval for change of zone 001, subject to staff stipulations and comments. Second. Motion to approve made by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Armstrong. Any discussion on motion for approval? Seeing, excuse me, Commissioner Jones. My apologies, that was a mistake, technology, sorry. All right, thank you. Any further discussion on motion for approval for case 2021-001? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong? Aye. Burns? Aye. Ewing? Aye. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moeller? Aye. Ollie? Aye. Reasons? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of this change of zone subject to the conditions of the staff passes eight in favor and none opposed. Thank you. This case will be heard once again on April 8th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. I will now entertain a motion on case number 2021-002 for 1841 North 94th. Commissioner Miller. Move to approve change of zone 002 subject to the staff stipulations and comments. Motion for approval made by Commissioner Miller. Is there a second? Second. Second made by Commissioner Huey. Any discussion on motion for approval? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Ewing? Aye. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moeller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Reasons? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend approval of change of zone uh, two Subject to the staff's comments and suggestions, passes eight in favor and none opposed. Thank you. This case will again will be heard April 8th uh, at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, that completes the change of zones. We'll now move on to the special use permits. The first one is special use permit application SP 2021-005, Cynthia Slabby. Home Occupation Special Use Permit for a Doggy Daycare for 10 dogs at 7714 Roland Avenue. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated March 15, 2021, the application and other documents, plans, pictures, and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the wine.echo, and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. No. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Slabby, are you in the, well, I know you're in the audience. I've got you queued up to speak. Could you go ahead and give us your name to make sure we're pronouncing it correctly? And give us your address and tell us about your project. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is, oops, uh, my name is Cynthia Slaby. Slaby, thank you. Are you guys getting, 
the same no, feedback that I No, we're getting we're we're good now. Okay, great. My thank you. My name is Cynthia Slaby. Um, my address is currently 221 West Navajo Lane in Kansas City, Missouri. I uh, bought the property at 7714 Roland Avenue, um, Kansas City, Kansas 66109 in November of last year. I bought the house for my parents um, and had moved back here from Philadelphia in 2019 to be closer to them um, due to some health concerns. Um, I have since fallen in love with the property and have a lot of experience with um, canine massage, canine agility, uh, and canine therapy um, related to hydrotherapy and things like that. And I decided instead to follow, instead of staying with the American Academy of Family Physicians, I moved and decided I wanted to pursue a purpose in working with animals. And I have the perfect space and that's what I'm looking to do. Um, I would like to have no more than 10 dogs at a time. The hours of operation would be 10 to 4 p.m. I would be providing transportation to and from. Uh, I'm very aware of the peace and serenity and don't want to add to any congestion. Um, additionally, there was some question earlier about uh, related to the kennel operation about uh, frequency of membership or frequency of same clientele. I absolutely want to build a community and I want it, I want very much so to have a very small clientele so that the dogs are the same on a daily basis. Um, additionally, I will require proof of vaccinations uh, in order to attend. Okay, thank you. I admire your move from people to animals. They are more appreciative. They don't complain, and they're and they're non-political. So uh, probably a lot easier all the way around. Okay, any questions for the applicant? I am not seeing any. So I'm going to go to the public. Is there anyone in the audience that came tonight to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request? Please raise your hand. Yeah, I'm not seeing anyone that wants to speak, so I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to Director Han for his comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Gunnar Hendrick of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, as the applicant mentioned, this is a, a dog daycare for up to 10 dogs maximum. We applied several standard, uh, conditions of approval, including no signage. As, as the applicant mentioned, part of their service is uh, pickup and drop off of their dogs. There is a condition in, of approval that, that allows uh, uh, customers to visit the property in cases of emergencies. Um, there's also a condition of approval for um, the hours of operation. We are recommending two years. Staff would ask if the commission agrees with our recommendation of approval that with their motion, they add another condition of approval I apologize, guys. We forgot to add the same standard condition that we applied to the other kennel operation earlier, which is a maximum of three off-street parking spaces um, for this property. And in the time between that kennel case and this kennel case, uh, I believe it was Ms. Jones who asked the question. I did confirm with our animal control that Chapter 7 does require all the vaccinations as stated by both applicants. Thank you. Questions for the director? Seeing none, I will stand for a motion. Commissioner Miller. Uh, I move to recommend approval uh, subject to the step subject to the stipulations in the staff report. Is the, okay, motion to approve made by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Armstrong. Any discussion? Yes, yep. Commissioner, Director, I mean, Director yeah. Hand. I apologize. Could we get the uh, condition of approval that uh, a maximum of three off three parking spaces be provided. Commissioner Miller. That's perfectly fine with me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Armstrong is your second. I'm good with that. All right. Thank you. 
So the uh, motion for approval with the additional staff stipulation made by Commissioner Miller, seconded by Commissioner Armstrong. Any discussion on that motion for approval? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Ewing? Aye. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moeller? Aye. Pauley? Aye. Reasons? Aye. Mr. Chairman, I motion to recommend approval of this special use permit subject to the revised conditions outlined by staff passes eight in favor and none opposed. Thank you. This case will be heard once again on April 8th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, our next special use permit is SP 2021-006, Amanda and Noah Taylor. Special use permit to store drilling and excavation equipment in vacant horse stable slash barn at 3648 North 115th Street. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated March 15, 2021, the application and other documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the wine.echo, echo, the notices to property owners, and the numerous emails received in opposition to this application. And today I did forward two letters and a spreadsheet provided by the Board of Commissioners office that lists all of the calls or emails that they've had, what the opposition was and their email addresses. At this time, does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose with regard to this case? No. no. Yes, yes, I've been I've been contacted by numerous uh, uh, members of the public uh, in regards to this case. Same with me. All right, and that's Commissioner Miller. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Uh, Taylor, I've got you queued up to speak. Go ahead and give us your name and your uh, current address, and tell us about your project. Uh, my name is Noah Taylor. I'm the owner of Solid Subservice of Business. Um, Oh, do you want our home address or the address of the property? Your your current home address. Yeah, one two 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 six South Apple Ridge Lane, Olathe, Kansas, six six zero six one. Okay, and tell us about your project out on one hundred and fifteenth Street. Um, we just bought this place because our uh, real estate agents told us it was commercially zoned, so we just said, okay, we'll take it. We had no idea going into this that we'd be we just wanted it for indoor storage of equipment I own. We don't plan to run a business out of there or have offices there um, for us. I mean, it's 100% equipment storage for us uh, to keep some of the big equipment that doesn't work all the time out of the weather. Uh, we do kind of a highly uh, specialized drilling. So a lot of those machines might go out maybe three, four times a year, maybe. Um, but yeah, we just want to keep our stuff indoors and we're also wanting to do a softball organization if possible, um, with maybe practices indoor each night for a couple hours, uh, indoor practices would be December to March. Well, let, let me inter interrupt you, Mr. Taylor, your application for tonight though, is just for storage of the equipment is it not i don't see anything on this uh on this application for a softball facility hi this is amanda taylor um i had i guess i'd asked to have an attachment or an addition to to the application and they had said it was received and we've been asked questions about the, the softball facility so I'm not well, i think sure. the softball facility might have come up at your neighborhood meeting but that's not what you've applied for here tonight Okay, so we can't do both of them, even though that's kind of what we thought we were doing from the get go. Well, all right, well, I'll tell you what, let me just, I'm going to interrupt you and go to Director Han. Director Han, 
Are we here tonight to talk about the softball facility or is there a way to incorporate this into? I'm assuming not because the notice requirement has not been met. We did not notice an SUP for athletic fields. I think there's still some outstanding questions. We did receive uh, some supplemental information this afternoon that we were unable to put into our staff reports. So staff still has unanswered questions, but as of right now, it has not been noticed for uh, an athletic field SUP. Right. right. So in order to hear so that case, we confirm, Mr. Yeah, I apologize. If we were to just to confirm what exactly they wanted out of the softball facility, it might not need an SUP, but there's still some ambiguity from staff's perspective on that issue. Okay. Mr. Taylor, why don't you go ahead and explain to us what you want to do with this uh, as far as the softball portion of it and we'll see whether or not it's something that can be done that doesn't even require uh, a, per a permit uh, we want to take half the the building and make it an indoor softball field for indoor practices and have hitting uh, tunnels pitching tunnels um, and then there's an outdoor horse arena to the left um, which would be to the west of our building um, we kind of were just thinking maybe put and then like a infield right there. So, I mean, it already has lights and fencing. We might, you know, make a fence outfield or something, tear, tear down some of the horse arena, but it's kind of already existing. We just need to flatten it out. And who would, access, for, the, yeah. who would, who would access this for those purposes? Uh, to be select fast pitch. And a select yeah, pitch is that the name of a team or is that the name of an organization or a it, group of it's teams? the name of a uh, non non profit organization uh, about 180 girls total ranging from eight year olds all the way to 18. Uh, we normally have to practice it like JCCC, but it is like a Kansas City, Kansas kind of organization. So we just think it'd be great to have a place like that for little girls to go practice. Um, the outdoor lights would go off by 8.30 at night, and that would probably start happening from March to November, outdoor practices. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna hold you up for just a minute. I'm gonna go back to Director Hand. Based on what's being discussed tonight, I don't think this is something we can hear tonight. Is that correct? Yeah, That's we've correct. got, we've got yeah, too much yeah. going on. If you wanted to okay. have your, right. you know, can we have daughter softball yeah. team use it for, for practice? That's one thing, but you're talking about a completely different organization and, and operation of that field, which has not been noticed to the public. So let's, let's focus tonight on your uh, storage of your equipment, because that's the only thing we can hear tonight. Okay. Um, so we have like 12 pieces of equipment ranging from excavators, front end loaders, drills, skid steers, mini hose, and we have one concrete pump. Um, we're wanting to store those indoors. And most of the machines, like the front end loaders, they're usually, they never come back unless they need work done. Um, there would be every once in a while, I'd say, uh, two times, maybe a month, you might see a semi in, semi out. Um, and we do have an old approach on 115th Street, which was the old address. We would like to somehow use that too, so that we could break traffic coming in and out. Okay, what type of trucks pull the trailers of the equipment? You mentioned uh, a couple they're, of they're just they're just little trucks. They're F450s with gooseneck trailers. There's only two of them that would be going in and out daily. We only have two trucks, two trailers. We're, I mean, we're a very small business, it's six employees. But some of the larger equipment like the drill rig, um, that's a commercial style, 110,000 pound machine, you know, that would be inside for, you know, most of the season, it might go out once or twice a year. And would that be pulled by a different type of vehicle? Yeah, it'd be more of a low boy semi. Okay, and the, the the red Mac truck that's pictured in the staff report, what what type of vehicle is that, and what's that used for? No, uh, that's a concrete boom pump. So we like to, you know, in the winter time, you kind of need to have those indoors so you can fill them up with water. And, you know, <coughs> it's, and I guess it's a, only... semi, it's a semi mounted pump truck basically. All right, and there's only one of those. Yes, yeah, just one of those. 
And that would park there every day. That would leave every day, and that would park there every night. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you with this question, but go ahead and continue on with your presentation. I mean, there would, we would like to do some improvements too. I mean, we wanted to paint the building, we wanted to do garage doors, put flat work in the inside of the building, uh, spray foam the building, uh, maybe widen the drives a little bit down by the approaches on 100 and, or Donahue and then 115th, widen those and asphalt everything or concrete everything. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we, we're trying to, you know, paint the fence black, the surrounding fence black. I mean, we're not going to let go of the waste, but uh, we sure like to be able to utilize, you know, a piece of property we spent our life savings on to buy. Sure. Okay. And uh, I also see a dump truck uh, in one of the, no, the photographs. Is that, is that one of yours no, as well? No, we were just loading that truck. We were trying to find as many pictures as we could. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. But the other pictures are indicative of the type of equipment that you'll be storing that will need to be hauled to and from the property on either somewhat of a regular basis or, you know, semi-annual basis, depending on which piece. Yeah. I mean, the, the big heavy equipment is usually out in the field. And a lot of times we don't want to pay to have it moved until the next job. So most of those are in the field all season long. Okay. Did you have anything else you wanted to add before we open up for questions? Uh, I mean, there would be some stuff outside, like some smaller items. We might keep like, you know, pallets or still rebars, some of the stuff outside, but I don't think you could see it from the road. You'd just be laying on the ground. Okay. Anything else? Uh, can you think of anything? Would any of that additional equipment be seen by neighboring property owners if it was just sitting outside, pallets, rebar? Uh, I, and that's, I don't think you can see it. I mean, okay. we have tall grass. There's some areas around back. I mean, we don't really have anybody behind us. So. And with those employees that you mentioned, would they be coming to the facility on a daily basis and leaving, leaving their personal vehicles there to, to take the other vehicles out? Um, I mean, we would like to have it where they could do that, but most of the time they just drive themselves to and from work. But we would like to have a base to park stuff at at night where people meet in the morning. Okay. Okay. Anything else before I open it up for uh, questions? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Questions from the commission. Any questions from commission members? Commissioner Jones. So Mr. Taylor, uh, I just want to clarify that Mack truck, the red one that you showed uh, a picture of, that would go out of from the property a minimum of one time out and one time back per day. Yeah, and it usually leaves at 4 a.m. and might be back, you know, 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. just depends. And then what are your plans for growth? I know you said right now you have six employees and a limited amount of equipment of, as we've seen in the pictures, but what are your plans for growth going forward? I don't really want to get to be some monster company. I, I like to stay small and be able to have my hands and everything and be able to manage it better that way. But does that so mean I don't, that really, I don't really plan to grow too much. I know what I can. So. I'm sorry, Commissioner Jones. Can, can you uh, be a little bit more definitive when you say not grow too much? Does that mean more or less than like 10 employees at some point or because we're. The, the I, would say, I would say less than less than 10 employees in the next 10 years. And would that require additional equipment to be purchase if you were going to do that? Uh, I wouldn't think so. All right. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Uh, yeah, Mr. Taylor, I just had a quick question. Um, in the staff report, it talks about how this equipment can be moved from anywhere from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's kind of a wide range of hours for that area. Um, do you have more of an idea of when those would be coming and going, more set times? 
I mean, whatever's convenient with everybody in Kansas City, Kansas, I guess, you know. Uh, I mean, we were trying to move at night, you know, where the traffic's not busy or during, you know, um, when kids are going to school or they're coming out of school, we would try to move before those times where their traffic's a little heavier and try to not be in the way. Commissioner Miller, you good? Yes, that's, that answers Thank you. you. Thank you. Commissioner Ernst? I think I need a little more explanation. We went from just a place to park your vehicles on the odd occasion when they weren't out in the field, and we ended at, would it be okay if guys parked their truck there every morning when they came to work? That's very much running a business out of that location, which we Even if there's nobody, if there's nobody there all day long. Let me go to Gunner. Let me go to the director to see what they would classify that as. Scott Andrew, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, it was our understanding or that this request that it was for storage only. I believe what Mr. Ernst is describing is staging area, which is not a part of this approval from our review of the project. If that's the request, that's different. So I mean, if you, guys, if you don't want them to park there in the morning or meet there in the morning, that's fine. I mean, we just bought the building to really keep equipment in. So. Mr. Ernst? I see your head nod. Uh, that answered my question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? Okay, I'm going to open, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and open up the public portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience tonight that came to speak in favor of this application? Please raise your hand. And I'm looking for people who want to speak in favor. I've got three, na three names. Mr. Jones, are you here to speak in favor? Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead and give us your name and address, please. My name is Eric Jones. I live at 12444 Faro Avenue, Kansas City, Kansas. And did you want to say anything at all about this case? Yes, sir. Um, I, I've been a longtime resident of KCK for my whole life. Uh, I currently run Select Fast Pitch. I understand that's not on the agenda tonight. I personally know the Taylors. Um, I've been intimately involved with kind of their plans uh, for the for, for that property. Um, and his verbalization to me is that he just wants to keep some property inside the, uh, the building. Okay. Um, it's my hopes at some point uh, to, to build a residence in that area. And I would never consider building a residence in that area if I felt like he was going to uh, run a full blown business out of there. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Anything else you wanted to add? No, sir. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else in the audience that wants to speak in favor? Okay, is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak in opposition? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start with Phil Noah. That's the name on the, what I see on my screen is Phil Noah. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Give us your name and address. My name is Phil Noah. I live at 4115 Independence Boulevard, Kansas City, Kansas, uh, in the Piper edition that is right off of Donahue and about 300 yards or, uh, or 300 feet east of 115th and Donahue. Uh, a couple of, th couple of the three uh, uh, observations. The concrete truck, uh, if it is going in and out of that building, is that one of the reasons why you're going to have to change a garage door? Uh, and also, for that equipment to be in there, uh, will that negate the ability for you to have softball practices in that building because of all that equipment? 
And Mr. Um, Noah, you're going to need to address your questions to me and, and all any other speakers. If you have questions, those need to be addressed to me and to the staff, and we'll get you answers to those questions. We won't have a back and forth between you and the applicant. Okay, thank you. Uh, the other thing is, is that uh, Miles Construction out in Baser started similar, and they kept growing uh, and building places to um, work on the machinery. I was wondering if, uh, where do you work on your machinery, and will you anticipate, uh, will he anticipate having to do that? And then the other thing is, uh, concrete trucks typically leave early in the morning to go uh, to do their jobs. That is a heavily trafficked area, 115th, school buses come that route. And sometimes uh, us going in and out of our neighborhood, uh, we have to pause quite a bit for the school buses uh, early in the morning and afternoon and traffic coming home uh, uh, from work, going to work. Um, the amount of traffic uh, kind of concerns us, but uh, I have pause about being able to put all that equipment in there and then later on him being able to use it as a practice facility that he'll address later. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, next up, I have Jamie C. Jamie C, go ahead and give us your, unmute yourself, give us your name and address, please. My name is Jamie Cochran. I live at 12220 Donahue Road. It is right there at the corner of Donahue and 123rd. Um, so my biggest question, I guess, to start off is going to be with that Mack truck. Donahue is a no big truck zone. And that is going to be your access to 100, or 435 and K7. So how does that apply with no big trucks on Donahue? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to answer that question because we did get a, uh, an opinion from Public Works. The no truck uh, signs on, on the, in that area is so that that is not to be used as a cut through. So somebody's not cutting through from 435, cutting through to K7. People, concrete trucks that are used for construction purposes or going to or from a business or storage facility are permitted in that in that respect. So just if anybody else wants to speak to the no uh, trucks on Donahue uh, signage, that is what the, that is, that is kind of where that's coming from. It's, it's not to be used as a cut through facility for people that are just dragging trucks through the area unless there's an intended purpose like construction, storage, or something like that. Okay. So I can go, I can um, address that one for you. Perfect. Thank you. My other concern is going to be, of course, the fact that I know Piper's uh, cross country runs Donahue from the school, so Hutton, all the way up to K7. So one, Donahue is heavily trafficked as is um, with the fact that it has the access to K7 and 435 just by regular vehicles. So then you're adding in all these other um, big trucks or trailers carrying these this equipment back and forth. And as he stated, the one, the Mack truck would come out daily. So out and in. Um, and I just feel like a lot of the conversation was very, um, well, no, now it's not this because we might upset somebody or now and it's changing consistently. And I, I'm concerned about what it will go to and what will happen to our community. I moved out to Piper, which I've been here my entire life. Um, and I've stayed in Piper because of the fact that it is somewhat the country. So bringing in a business, whether it's storing business vehicles or not, that's taking away from our country um, feel out here and our community that we have, which you're on an, in an area that is horse stables, farmland, um, everybody out here that I know of has at least on, on this road, this stretch, an acre of land minimum. So, and, and that's, that's for personal use, not, not commercial, it's residential. And I just worry about what that's going to do to our community, to our prices of our homes and the area itself. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Steve McDonald, give us your, unmute yourself, give us your name and address. Mr. McDonald. Steve McDonald. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next speaker. Hello? Yes, go ahead. This is Steve McDonald, I'm sorry. That's all right. 
Give us your okay. uh, uh, give us your address, please. My my address is at one one seven one eight Donahue. And uh, I read the uh, staff report closely, and when I got to the uh, the uh, recommendation, I was it, it seemed a little counterintuitive based on the report I read submitted by the staff. Uh, in the interest of time, I, I, I won't go through all the points I had made through the staff's notes, but I did meet with uh, the Taylors when they had the neighborhood notice. And uh, I think the staff, they approved this with the restriction of 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Equipment being moved out uh, on and off the site. Um, yeah, I want to make a clarification, Mr. McDonald. And Mr. McDonald, Mr. McDonald. Supply company, and I served uh, customers like Noah. And um, my hat's off to Noah for the business he's in and the demands of the industry. And it's a tough business. And the the restrictions from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. is is not realistic for a concrete pump. Uh, Noah, Noah said a minute ago that it might be leaving at 4 a.m. Um, it's my opinion, that's when that pump is usually on the job uh, in the summertime, especially. I think it, 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 it'd be leaving the uh, facility more like 3 a.m. And there's not enough pumps in this city. Uh, so he'll be kept busy uh, until dark. Uh, if there is any growth, Noah's smart. Uh, he's gonna add a few concrete pumps uh, they are equipment operators, so whatever equipment they add to it, there will be an employee in a parked car there. Uh, based on what Noah, Noah shared a lot, uh, and based on some of the things he talked about, we can't talk about the softball facility. I have a huge concern about that because that's a, a club of several teams from eight and under to 18 and under, and they're serious about their sport and, uh, I, I, I fear of, of the volume of traffic and people that would come there. But back to the building, is my opinion, based on what Noah has offered, uh, they plan on using that as a base of operations. Uh, he has taken him at his word. There was mention of an office being built. Uh, I have a concern if he divides the arena in half, how effectively he'll be able to store his equipment and will some of it spill outdoors. He will need an employee parking lot. There will need to be additional lights. We're not talking about baseball field lights. Uh, Noah made a, a substantial investment. He referred to it as his life savings. Uh, that building has access off 435. It makes a lot of sense why he would buy it and, and then uh, sink more money into the investment. Uh, he was misled by the property, uh, about the property being zoned. And I feel bad for him for that. But uh, I see this as more of a shop with a few pieces of equipment stored. Uh, there'll be a mechanic there, I I'm betting. Uh, that concrete pump, might the fleet might grow, I don't know. But even if it doesn't, that concrete pump's gonna leave early and come back at dark. And uh, it's just not fitting for the neighborhood. I live right across the street and I too sunk my savings into the old Doc Carpenter place. And it's an idyllic setting. And, and uh, I don't think it has any use to be near an industrial type use for land. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Mark Evans. Mr. Evans, I've got, unmute yourself, please. Give us your name and address. My name is Mark Evans. I live at 3515 North 115th Street here in Piper. I'm about a three iron away from the uh, the place that we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> that wouldn't be my three iron, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's if I catch it good. Hey, uh, I didn't make it to the group meeting. Uh, the neighbors, I didn't get the letter, but I can tell you who this is going to affect if this would even consider passing this thing. It's the guy that lives next door to the place that works for the union, works for the railroad. He's an engineer, works night and day and tries to sleep during the day. You got a Wyandotte County Sheriff across from it, worker. You have two KCK firefighters that got letters, lives right there. You have a doctor of dentistry there. You have a real estate agent, BPU employees, and a bunch of retirees. 
and this will affect all of them. And, and these guys have just showed up for three months and they're wanting to be treated special and it's not special. The, one of the eight golden rules established by the Kansas Supreme Court to consider on a special permit is safety. The Piper schools, I drove over tonight, there's 24 school buses that transport kids to school back and forth. That's in the morning, starting at that six o'clock till about 8.30. And they go back and forth from the elementary school to the middle school and to the high school. They do that in the morning, they do that in the afternoon. And when we got low boys pulling in and out of there, these big trucks, semis, someone's gonna get hurt and it's gonna be the kids. And I don't even see how you could consider giving a special permit to this project. It's been a running target to get this fella pinned down. You've seen the moving target that's gone on tonight. If I was buying a property like that, it's the buyer's responsibility to find out what that property is listed at. Now, he threw, threw the real estate agent under the bus. Maybe it wasn't right. I would never make a decision like that. And the real estate agents we're talking about, we got them here in Wyandotte County too, all right? And the ones involved in this, one was in North East Berry Road, and the other one was 108 something something Grandview Boulevard out in Overland Park. And this guy is from Olathe, They've been here three months. He wants a special permit. The special permits are the people around here that's made this community. One of these people live right there, pays $11,000 in excess in property taxes every year, and it's going to ruin his place. One of the properties that touches up to his ground has a special needs student every day. You can see the small school bus come and pick this child up. It's the safety factor. It cannot be allowed. Now, the school board and the schools are on spring break right now but we have reached out to the public here, the school boards. The safety factor is a big thing. I also look at the staff report and you look on page three, number two. Let me put my glasses on because I don't see too good no more. Number two, you look down at the article. Use of drilling and excavation equipment is appropriate in areas with heavy industrial or mining and extraction work, not in the middle of farmland. Subsequently, the storage of drilling and excavation equipment is also better suited for industry zoned areas, not in agricultural zoned areas. Go to your also staff recommendation on page Mr. four. Evans, excuse me, you have one What's minute. That? Yeah, one minute left, Mr. Mr. Okay, thank you. Number seven, and also a little farther down on it, one of the several purpose of the zoning code is to separate incompatible uses and concentrate like uses with other areas. Storage of drilling and evacuation equipment is better suited for industrial zone areas, not in agricultural zone areas. I make my case. I haven't heard anybody that wants that place there. Thanks right. for your time. And I appreciate the commissioner hearing this. Thank you, sir. Yes. Okay. And, and for those of you that are still waiting to speak, um, if, if, it's, if they've already spoke to traffic and we've spoke to safety, uh, if you just please limit your comments, if you want to just give us your name and address and tell us that you're opposed based on previous statements made, Ms. Parker will just include that in the record and we'll make sure that we have you counted as, as being opposed. So don't feel like you have to get up and say the same thing. You can just tell us that you're opposed for all the same reasons as previous speakers and we'll make sure that we've, we've got you recorded. So I'm going to go to Daniel, excuse me, Danelle Collins. Danelle got you queued up to speak. Go ahead and give us your name and address, please. Hello, my name is Danelle Collins. I live at 3400 North 115th Street, Kansas City, Kansas, 66109. I am uh, concerned about the development here. I live directly south of the property, not directly touching, but directly south. My concern is related to stormwater runoff. Uh, equipment like this does involve chemical solvents, uh, any kind of synthetic oils that tend to get into the ground, either 
washed downstream by stormwater or into the groundwater. I have cows and horse and goats and farm animals that drink from a pond that is fed by the field stormwater runoff um, to the north, which includes the property in question. I'd like to have that addressed to see if it, there could be a solve for it. And if not, I uh, propose there's a concern to the health of my animals. All right. Thank you very much for that question. We'll try to get you some answers. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go to Cindy Kuklinski. Hope I said that right. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Give us your name and address, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. My name is Cindy Kuklinski. I speak on behalf of myself and my husband, David Kuklinski. We live at 3657 North 115th Street. The barn and the property that we're speaking about is in direct view of our home. We built here 25 years ago. Um, so needless to say, have seen incredible progress in that time, including Speedway. Well, you know the, the progress. We have never ever opposed or questioned any kind of potential zoning changes, but we do. Um, and I was going to speak to the traffic. I am concerned about the environmental impact, obviously about safety. Our children graduated from Piper schools um, and school buses are a huge issue. Um, and we haven't mentioned the erosion of the roads around here, whether they go up and down Donahue or Leavenworth or 115th or leave at 3 a.m. or come back at 8 p.m. I think we all know that business is business. If business is booming, it's hard for me to believe. I am sorry, but it's hard for me to believe that one would not grow their business um, especially based on buying this kind of property and having these kinds of plans. So we are concerned about that as well as potential, you know, I'm kind of going around here, but potential damage to wildlife. Um, but we're also very concerned. We have a great amount of our financial investment in our home that we built. My husband is a firefighter, was required to stay in Wyandotte County he is now retired, but we remain here because we have faith, you know, that the Piper community and the, the ambiance, the reason that we're here will remain. The integrity of Piper really is residential, country setting, um, and, you know, it, industrial parks smack in the middle of this. I don't see... It's, it's hard for me to fathom that we're even entertaining this conversation, an industrial park in the middle of this. Um, so the financial impact of this, the depreciation of homes, again, this is right across from our yard. We see the horses or saw the horses every day. Um, I can see rebar from here, I can see a hay bale from here. So I will certainly be able to see rebar from here. So it's a financial impact that this is gonna to have to us as well as surrounding neighbors. So really, I, I very much appreciate you taking the time to listen to me and of course. very opposed to this. All right, thank you, so Ms. Thank you. Ms. Kuklinski. Okay, next up is Stasia Bradley. Go ahead and give us your name and address, please. I'm Stacia Bradley. I live Stacia. at 42. Yes. My apologies. <laughs> That's okay. I live at 40... chance that I blew it. Thank you. <laughs> I live at 4238 North 125th Circle, and I moved to Piper area in 2011. And the reason we moved to this area was because it's quiet. It's not a lot of businesses in the area. You know, you can go to the legends for businesses. So I don't uh, have children. They get on the school buses. But I do travel Donahue every day. When I leave my subdivision, I have to get on Donahue. 
Okay. There's a lot of traffic. It's one lane each way. There's a lot of traffic. So I believe that this would be an issue, uh, this business. Plus, as I mentioned, this is residential. This is our community. So I'd like to ask you guys, your commissioners, Karen Jones and Ms. Pauly, and you who, I'm, who just uh, introduced me, would you want this in your residential neighborhood? Because we certainly don't want it for the majority that I know of in the Piper community. So I thank Mr. Evans for doing his homework and presenting such good information. And I am 100% opposed to any type of commercial business on Donahue. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, uh, I've got uh, somebody just named Lois. So Lois, if you could please unmute yourself, uh, give us your full name and your address, please. Lois? One more time, Lois, are you, I've got you unmuted. You should be able to speak. Okay, we might be having some technical difficulties, so I'm gonna move on down the line. If we can get that taken care of, I'll go back to you, Lois, but I'm gonna to go to Joanna. Joanna, please give us your name and address. Joanna. I don't know what they're talking about me. Joanna. Oh, hi. We can hear you. Okay. Um, but everybody has brought up a lot of, of good points. I'm opposed to it too. My address is 4417 North 121st Terrace. This is- um, Joanna, what's your last name, please? Wolf. And I love living out here in the Piper area. It's uh, semi-rural residential. I have a hard time. I mean, there's the issues of everybody mentioned about with the traffic and stuff. I think it'll tear up road, the road streets as well. And it just, to me, when I think about, I mean, there's horses, there's farm animals, you know, cattle and, you know, and the school buses and everything. I just can't see in an, a business like this industrial in the middle of this residential area, because it will impact all of us that live here um having this here i mean even right in front of this this um business there's a home there with with his with his horses there and right across the street you know they have farm animals there too and you know already i see that he's got a big pile of dirt that's um outside the horse barn that um, he's doing some work on, but it's it's just everything that everybody has said. It really will impact this whole area. Um, I, you know, I can appreciate him wanting to build and grow his business, but you know, to me, it seems like it belongs in more of an industrial area than in the middle of a residential area. And it will impact just, just when I think about traveling on Donahue and 115th Street, rather between 435 and K7, that will, that will impact all of us out here. Okay, anything else? I think what everybody else has been saying too, okay. um, I agree with. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, next up, Kurt Cook, Mr. Cook. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Kurt Cook. Sir, go ahead and unmute yourself and then give us your name and address, please, for the record. Can you hear me? Yes, I can now, yes. My name is Kurt Cook. I live at 12520 Donahue. I do work in this industry. And the pictures you're showing up there, every one of them piece of equipment do move on a low boy. And that will be the residential roads that are built for residential uh, cars and not heavy equipment. It's going to damage our roads. And the other question is, when he says storage, uh, that can be broadly uh, interpreted. That storage one night, one week, one month, one year. What's that mean when you guys want to say storage? 
I was kind of involved in making, uh, going to KDOT to get the trucks to quit driving in front of my house because I used to have 25, 18 wheelers. And you guys have addressed that. I'm afraid if we let this happen, we're going to have tractor trailers, which you're saying are not going through, but they will be going back and forth, back and forth to his shop. And you call it what it is, it will be his shop. And the last question is, where does he storage equipment in this today? And then why is he moving it to here? I'm opposed. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, um, Scott Holt. Go ahead, Mr. Holt, give us your name and address. Is Scott Holt, can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi, it's Scott Holt, Elevate 40, 4033 Independence Boulevard. And, you know, really echoing the other neighbors, I'm strongly opposed uh, to this rezoning. Um, you know, just to state, and I appreciate Mark Evans, I think put it, put it best so far, but I appreciate all the other neighbors. Um, my concerns are really also in addition, you know, the added noise and light pollution. Um, and I think it was also stated about damaging the roads. Um, extra debris, um, extra litter, all the things associated with a large business. So I uh, appreciate your time and just want to put my name in to say I'm strongly opposed to this. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Mr. Holt. Kathy Steiniger. Yes, Ms. Steiniger. Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Give us your name and address. Kathy Steiniger. 4413 North 122nd. I just kind of want to reiterate what everybody else said. I'm strongly, strongly opposed to this. I've only been out here a year. I've been in KCK my whole life. I was born here. Um, I just lost my last home to improvement. And I don't really want to see this come out to this area. Like everybody said, this is country. I like the ambiance out here and I don't want to see these trucks running up and down the street. I'm worried about kids. I'm worried about our community and I'm worried about my property values. Thanks. And I just wanted to say I am opposed. All right. Thank you, Ms. Steiniger. Okay. Uh, Jane McKinley. Hello. My name is Jane McKinley. Uh, I live at 12020 Donahue Road. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of me and my husband, Greg. Uh, I've lived out here since 1968 on various portions of Donahue. Um, I want to agree with everybody. Statements have been made, uh, specifically uh, Steve McDonald and Mr. Evans. Uh, I would also say, I, I know we're not speaking to a lot of traffic issues, but Directly, I live directly west of the property and a directly uh, south of my property on the other side of Donna, who currently is a pretty large horse arena uh, that's a working business over there. And um, they maintain things within the buildings. But I will say the traffic with horse trailers coming down in front of my property, which is, you know, just the next property down on Donahue. I have, there's horse trailers for lessons and all kinds of things that are going in and out of there. Uh, they start early in the morning and uh, they're coming in and out of there, to, you know, 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock at night. So I've already got that additional traffic that I see all the time on Donahue. Uh, I would hate to see this additional traffic in addition to, I agree with all the other comments, all the other people have made. Uh, I've gone through, you know, Donahue Road used to just be barely a gravel road, one, one and a half lane. I've gone through all the improvements of widening Donahue, losing property to widening Donahue in the past. And this is just, this, doesn't fit into the schematic of the things out here. Um, it's also one of the very few areas in the Piper community uh, that we have sidewalks where uh, people in our community can walk and pedestrians in addition to the, I'll explain with the cross country kids, 
but it's a very active community walking area when the weather's nice. And I just think that that's going to be one of the few community things that we have like that is also going to be affected by this kind of traffic. So I strongly oppose and I agree with everything I've already heard so far. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to Lois. Lois, were you able to get yourself unmuted? Could I? Um, I have spoke with Lois, and uh, her microphone's not working. Could I try to put her through my phone? Okay, that's fine. Ja this is Jamie Cochran, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank and you. you're gonna put you're gonna put Lois on your phone. Yes, one more. Right, that, that's fine. Hello. Yes, L Lois, go ahead and give us your. Lois Go ahead. Lattice. Go ahead. Lois Lattice, okay. Your address? North 143rd Street. Oh. Okay. okay. Well, either, mute your, either mute your phone or turn off one of the phones. Okay. I strongly oppose it. I don't believe that industrial businesses to be with residential agriculture. Okay. Okay. Anything else? I strongly oppose. All right, thank you. Anyone else want to speak? Okay, Lynn. Okay, you got to help me with the last name. Pro Propolish. Okay, I'm sorry. She's. We're gonna to have to promote her to panelist. Okay, try now. Um, and see if you can unmute yourself to speak, ma'am. I've lost her. Look like Propolish was the last name. Propolish. She was used. Okay, Lynn, are you able to hear us? We've got you queued up to speak, Lynn. If you can hear us, please give us your name and address. Okay. I, Cindy, I'm going to call on you. Are you? Go ahead, Cindy. Cindy Kuklinski, I know you've already spoken you before. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. So Brad Hoffman is using our computers, so I'm going to um, let him speak now. Okay, this is Brad Hoffman. My name is Brad Hoffman. I'm at 3701 North 115th Street. I am directly across just east of the, the facility that we are talking about. I um, am totally opposed to it. Um, I went to the meeting that night for the uh, all the... Uh, neighbors and everything and uh, he said that he would did not want to put a road coming out on 115th which now is said that we are going to put a road out on 115th which comes out directly in front of my house um, so I'll be seeing them, the low boys and trucks and whatever else coming in and out of there and he even said himself four o'clock in the morning um, this is not what I signed up for when I bought the place i've been here 11 or 12 years something in that order so just want to agree with agree along with everybody else on what their comments were i'm not going to go into that but like i said my driveway will be directly across from this entrance on 115th street like i said i oppose it and i'm uh, that's all for me all right thank you very much okay i don't see any other hands up one last call anyone else that wants to speak okay Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting now. We will go to Director Han for his comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Gunnar Han, Director of Planning and Urban Design. <clears throat> I think that there was generally some confusion on the staff's uh, report as we were developing it. As the application came in, we, we understood this to be simply for the storage of large material. Um, about two weeks ago, we started to receive quite a bit of, um, maybe a little more than two weeks ago, quite a bit of 
letters in opposition. And as we read through those letters in opposition, they were for reflecting points that we did not understand to be the applicant's um, request. So we submitted a letter early -ish last week um, to the applicant for clarification based on what we understood to be misinformation. I think that there's I'm, been- I'm sorry, Gunnar. Uh, I need to go back to the applicant to address some of the questions. Sure. And I apologize for that. So I wanna call upon Mr. Taylor. Noah Taylor, if you're st still see you, go ahead and unmute yourself. Just want to have you address some of the neighborhood concerns. And I've got a couple of things written down. I don't know if you've kept track, but can you tell me um, uh, as far as where do you work on the equipment? If, if there's needed repairs on the equipment, is that would that be done on site? Where's that done? Um, I mean, it's it, you never know. It might be in the field or we might bring it back if we have to wait for a part for months, you know. Okay. Um, but a lot of times they go to Wilkerson Crane to get worked on. Okay, so it just depends on the, the nature of the, the problem and what piece of equipment? Yeah. Okay, and then can you uh, address times for the concrete trucks? So there was some uh, discussion about concrete truck. Concrete trucks usually need to leave earlier in the morning than, than the stated times. And I think even during your comment, you might've said something about four o'clock in the morning. Um, can you can you speak to when those concrete trucks need to be out going and moving in the morning? Yeah, we just have one concrete truck. We have six employees. I mean, I think all the people think that this is going to is some monstrous company, but it's temporary. It's, it's temporary. I mean, we would like to just have the special use permit for two years so we can try to find an industrial place. Um, you know, you can't even, if it's inside the building, nobody can even see the equipment. It's just, it's, this is absurd. I mean, I don't know. Okay. You know, can you talk six hundred fifty thousand dollars for something and you have 30 people call in and oppose it. You know, it's just like, good Lord. Well, do you want us to continue on, Mr. Taylor? Or or, I mean, I'm sure I know what you guys' answer is. You're not going to approve this. So, I mean, why don't, why don't I just be out $650,000 and figure out how to get, recoup my money, I guess. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give your response. I'm going to go ahead and go to the director for his comments. Director Hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Gunnar Hand, Director Planner and Resign. Uh, as I was saying earlier, I'll just kind of take a quick step back. So as we understood, this is again, this is a this is a request for a temporary use of land, which is for two years only, and and the whole purpose of this temporary use of land is for, to find a a permanent solution, as the applicant just stated, couldn't have said it more clearly. Uh, this is definitely a use that is only allowed currently in an industrial zone by right. So this is a temporary use of land for industrial purposes on a piece of property that is currently zoned agricultural. When after the neighborhood meeting, we started fielding quite a few reports of uh, from neighbors in opposition with what we thought was misinformation, which after clarifications with the applicant and tonight sounds to be more like what they're actually requesting. So based on the fact and the frequency of, I would say, even if it's weekly, the frequency of that Mack truck up and down the roads, as well as the possibility that there would be a semi-tractor trailer potentially moving some of this equipment in and out of the property, albeit at a much less frequent time, we were operating and writing our staff report on the assumption that it would be basically these, you know, big F-450 type stuff. Nothing, not too dissimilar from large agricultural hauling type of equipment. This sounds like it's more than that. I think at this time, staff would amend our recommendation for denial. If the commission did move forward with a recommendation for approval, we would ask that you include the conditions of approval that we wrote in the staff report, as well as some additional conditions, which I will leave to uh, that point in time if that motion were to arise. And with that, staff will take additional questions as needed, but we, at this point, now recommend denial. All right, uh, question for the director, Commissioner Miller. Uh, Gunner, I, I understand the denial now, but um, I just kind of have a question on our special use permit process because I, I get the clarity and all that and what's not there, but 
I get that he's going to say that it's temporary, and I understand that that's what's staff's idea. But it's more of a process question for me on that. These people bought a piece of property with the intention of storing property on it and filed for a special use permit. Why are we not going through the process of saying, let's make this a change of zone? Because if their entire purpose to buy the property is to use it as a different zoning, why aren't we changing the zoning instead of a special use permit? I believe in the pre-app, we, we recommended they did not pursue a change of zone to industrial uses. This would have to be, I think, an M2 or higher. And one, it would be spot zoning because there's no industrial land anywhere in the vicinity. And two, it's inappropriate for this use. It doesn't meet the underlying land use. There's no industrial uses adjacent. So the path forward to do what they want done is an SUP. Which is my underlying point on the process of kind of when you look at the area, it's just more to me when we look at it, I feel like we hand out special use permits to solve these kinds of issues when in reality, if we likely wouldn't change it to industrial to begin with, why start the conversation? It's kind of my, that's just my belief. Well, and, and if I may, I, I think that the way that I interpret this specific special use permit for temporary use of land is it's not two years and re-up and re, and re every two years. Other SUPs go from two to five to 10 potentially, right? This is two years period to find a permanent solution. And you've seen that in our staff reports in the last few months where we've been doing these and specifically saying, this is not your permanent solution. We'll let you store this stuff here in this case until you find a permanent solution. I will answer a quick question while I, while I brought that up, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Miller. Um, in our responses from the applicant, he did say that he currently stores this equipment in a different facility in Kansas City, Kansas. And I understand all that, and I thank you for the question. I, I, I was more asking just because typically when we see the temporary use, it's a rental or it's a lease. You know, we look at it, they don't own the property, and so the owning of the property is what kind of stuck out to me on this one. Okay. Other questions for the director? Mr. Reasons? Yeah, I, uh, I'm a huge fan, of course, of businesses. But when I see these equipment um, going in a residential neighborhood, you know, I get, I get why all the uh, property owners are saying what they're saying, you know, all this equipment coming up and down the road. I guess my question is, is if this is a residential area, why are we did we even entertain a special use permit on something like this? Because you can clearly see this, this equipment isn't, uh, it doesn't fit this neighborhood, even on a part-time basis. And I feel like we're, we're throwing people out there saying, Hey, you might have the opportunity, but then when you get this backlash from, especially out in that Piper area, you know, this clearly belongs in the industrial area, not in a residential. And I guess my concern, why wasn't this, shot down first before it even came to us because it didn't even, it doesn't even seem like it fits the demographic out there at all great question um it's gonna hand director plan and urban design i think there's two two points that are uh informing that one they had already acquired the property so they were looking for a solution and two um we're not the decision makers um, we try to guide applicants down the right course of action that we think would be best both for them and the community and the greater good. And in this situation, it was not a change of zone. It was an SUP. We try to find solutions and not say no. Okay. Further <laughs> questions from the commission of the director? Seeing none, I will stand for a motion. I believe this is me yes, or Mr. Ernst. Miller. Commissioner Ernst. I move the Kansas City, Kansas City Planning Commission recommend denial of petition SP based on current staff recommendations and its incompatibility with the belt. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the last part of your motion? You cut out. I don't know if that's on my end or your end, but would you mind doing that for me, please? As we progress through this evening, some matters came out that made it even less compatible. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Miller? Second. Okay, motion for denial made by Commissioner Ernst, seconded by Commissioner Miller for uh, incapac, excuse me, for reasons based on staff recommendations and incompatibility with the uh, area or nature of the area uh, being proposed, made by Commissioner Ernst and seconded by Commissioner Miller. Any discussion on motion for denial? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Ewing? Aye. Jones? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moeller? Aye. Holly? Aye. Reason? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend denial of this special use permit based on the staff's revised staff recommendation and the incompatibility of this use with the nature of the area passes eight in favor and none opposed. All right, thank you. This will be heard again, heard once again on April 8th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you all for your attendance tonight and your comments. Mr. Chairman, that takes us to our last item on the agenda tonight, special use permit application SP 2021-007, Ryan Burrows with Joe's Kansas City Barbecue. Renewal of a special use permit for the temporary use of land for a parking lot for Taco Republic at 4620 Mission Road. Please include the following items as part of the record for this case. The city's currently adopted zoning and subdivision regulations, the official zoning map for the area in question, the city's currently adopted master plan for the area in question, the staff report and attachments dated March 15, 2021, the application and other documents, plans, pictures and maps submitted by the applicant in furtherance of the case and contained in the official file, the notice in the Wyandotte Echo and the notices to property owners. Does any member of the commission have any contact to disclose on this application? No. no. Oh. Thank Mr. You. Barrows, I've got you. I'm sorry, go ahead, Janet. No, I was just saying thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Barrows, I've got you queued up to speak. Go ahead and give us your name and address, please. Tell us about your project. Yeah, hey, uh, my name is Ryan Barrows. I'm with Joe's Kansas City Barbecue. My home address is 1515 Hodges Lane in Raymore, Missouri, 64083. Um, basically, this project, uh, we've, we have been granted two special use permits since 2017. And, and in that time, we've, we've had a, a great kind of wandering desire what we wanted to do with that uh, property. Ultimately, understanding the best use of that is for parking for the Taco Republic building. Uh, without that parking, they don't really have enough parking spaces to meet code uh, to operate with their with a fully functioning business license. Um, I will tell you that we were, and, and I did submit the plans that, that we got, we, I had my architect draw up and we'd submitted to, uh, to committee to the DRC, I wanna say in mid 2019, uh, so we got far enough down the path with that, that, that we had comments back to go through the DRC process and get this a fully realized parking lot for them, and that would become a permanent structure. Uh, and so fast forward then to uh, March, basically this time last year, uh, where, where the time came for, and, and actually I had dialogue with the owner of Taco Republic in February last year talking about the costs associated with this and how we were going to need to raise rent for the lot uh, in order to pay for it. Because believe it or not, 14 parking spaces uh, on that little corner there costs quite a bit of money to get it to be aesthetically pleasing uh, to, to meet the DRC guidelines. Um, then obviously COVID hit and that's why we're all on a Zoom call today instead of uh, in person down there in 7th Street. So what I'm asking is for a little, uh, a little grace by the committee for uh, the expenditure and overall cost of this project due to COVID related, um, I, I would say, you know, loss of revenue for both the landlord, which is Joe's Kansas City, who's seen significant drops in sales and, and business due to 
everything from including government shutdowns as as, as well as just you know consumer confidence in, in dining out. So uh, and then also with Taco Republic, who's seen this demand substantial uh, decrease in sales. So we've got two restaurant tours involved in a in a real estate uh, transaction, if you will, that that was slated to to go down the way that that the commission and and the planning commission would have wanted. Um, and we were we were on that path, and then you know this happened, and here we are. So we're we're hoping for for uh, an extension of the SUP just to get us get us away from this time frame, let us build up a little more resources, and and then you know execute the plan. Okay, thank you. Questions for the applicant? Seeing none, is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak in favor of or in opposition to this request tonight? Seeing none, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go to staff for their comment. Director Hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is Gunnar Hand, Director of Planning and Urban Design. Uh, as Mr. Barrows uh, mentioned, this is for an offsite uh, parking lot that has been previously approved through two SUPs. This would be its second renewal if, if it were to move forward. Um, we've reviewed the plans. Uh, we've, we've decided that because the conditions of approval, i.e. the improvement of this property has not been met from its original nor its renewal, that we would recommend denial of this second renewal uh, for this case. That will leave Taco Republic with 11 spots that they need to find one way or another. They had previously um, had a parking agreement for across the county line road uh, in Westwood. It's under our understanding that that parking agreement's been terminated, so they'd have to find a location somewhere else. Um, if the commission were to move forward with a recommended approval, we would recommend um, two conditions as a part of that motion. One, that they complete this with, they complete the construction of the, of the um, uh, parking lot per their site plans and code within six months. They've had years, um, as well as that they connect Taco Republic to this parking lot via a public sidewalk construction between the two properties. There has been a history of NOVs on this site, namely before they were in the ownership of, of uh, Mr. Barrow's company. Uh, so those aren't necessarily an issue, although it is a, through the pictures, not the best taken care of. I mean, it's just an unimproved service parking lot more than anything, right? Um, we would also note that uh, there was one uh, letter in opposition, and that is the property owner at which we would need to cross with the sidewalk. So with that, we leave it to you. Commissioner Ernst, questions? Gunner, would you agree that other than an agreement and perhaps sidewalk, it's kind of a stretch to call this parking for Taco Republic? There's not a close proximity. Um, it's pretty close. I think people usually park off of County Line Road, so it's a little counterintuitive to go out that entrance, which is kind of not really an entrance to Taco Republic along Mission Road and then come down away. I think people from Joe's, Joe's KC certainly use it at times if they're knowledgeable enough to do it. But again, that's how it gets used is, is half of it. I think part of it here is that it's close. It's within, how about this? It's within, um, it's not within the 100 feet, so it requires an SUV. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Muller. Commissioner Muller? Commissioner Muller. Oh, excuse me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Gunnar, what would they need to do to come up to the original conditions of the original SUP? Basically, redo the entire lot. Uh, what, what, what does that mean? I, I drive by this multiple times a day. I, I'm just curious what that means. Sure, there's a, a fence requirement. If you look at the, in the staff report, there are site plans, namely landscaping, fencing, screening, um, wheel stops, 
uh, resurfaced the parking lot. It's been restriped in the course of the last couple of years. So that's the only improvement we've seen. But the site plans included, uh, and as well as uh, public improvements like sidewalks. So the denial would allow them an opportunity to get this up to speed or what would happen if we deny this? They would no longer be able to use that property as a surface parking lot. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Governor, correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds like you were at least alluding to uh, their problems having begun before the pandemic in terms of they had an opportunity to correct what they needed to correct with the parking. Yes, the first application was in 2017. Were, were you asked They about also came in for renewal in 2019 pre-pandemic and didn't comply with those conditions either. So really these things should have been addressed before the pandemic, before now? I would say they should have been built six months from the original approval. Thank you. Other questions for the director? Seeing none, I will stand for a motion when ready. May I ask a question of staff? Yes, Commissioner Ernst. Gunner, would there be any value in holding this over so you could discuss an approval and six months to complete it, period? And that would be the end of the road? Or I don't want to make if I'm under if I, I'm sorry, Commissioner. If I'm understanding, are you are you recommending a six month approval of the SUP? No, sir. I'm asking if we should hold this over so that you and they can reach agreement on exactly what has to happen. Six, months, we might approve it. I am not willing to make a motion for six months. Someone else may be, but I'm asking if there would be holding it over so you could reach a good solid agreement with them this time on what needs to happen. Because twice before, apparently it didn't work. Those were, not, those were not good solid agreements, I'm assuming, because they never happened. Yes, sir. Director Hand. Uh, Commissioner Ernst, in all honesty, I don't think continuing for 30 days is going to change our opinion. I think we've been in contact with Mr. Burroughs since before he submitted the renewal at SUP and mentioned both this sidewalk and those improvements and how we want them done post haste. And um, uh, again, I think that we're, we're just concerned that it's going to be another SUP for two years and nothing gets improved. You have thoroughly answered my question. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Polly. I would just like to make a motion. Is that, is this the I, time to do it? I asked for one previously. So yes, okay. I would love it. Motion to deny based on staff recommendations. Second. And uh, can you can you further state maybe a, a, other than staff recommendations a, a reason for the denial motion? Is it because they failed to? Thank you. The petitioner um, previous to special use permit approvals did not complete the work that they were supposed to do. All right, thank you. Motion is for denial made by Commissioner Polly for those reasons stated. Seconded by Commissioner Ernst, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion for denial? Seeing none, roll call. Armstrong? Aye. Ernst? Aye. Huey? Aye. Jones? Aye. Miller? I'm sorry. Aye. Moeller? Aye. Holly? Aye. Reasons? Aye. Mr. Chairman, that motion to recommend denial of this special use permit for the reasons outlined passes eight in favor and none opposed. 
Thank you. This will be heard once again on April 8th at 7 p.m. before the Board of County Commissioners. Thank you. And Janet, I believe that's the end of our agenda. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Anybody have anything else before we before I adjourn the meeting? Nobody eagerly awaiting to speak. It's just